Hello, and thank you for having me. My name is Elizabeth Graber, and I'd like to speak today about the issue of litter in the Green Bay Parks. Uh, I would like to start by discussing Joliet Park uh, up on Nicolet Drive. I hope I'm pronouncing all of these correctly. Um, Joliet Park, I think, is a fascinating nexus of the human population and the other than human world. Uh, I would like to start by showing you this video I took uh, last time I visited the park. And you'll notice as I do, just how intersected the human and other than human worlds are at this park. So you can see from the very beginning, we have these vestiges of human structures. Here in the middle, this round stone is another example of something concrete mixed in with all of this beautiful vegetation, fallen trees, stones, you can see the soil. I apologize for the speed of the camera. And also mixed in with all of this, you see human waste. Examples like this water bottle and another that you'll see shortly are rather extreme compared to some of the other forms of litter that I was able to find at this park. You notice the, the beautiful waves crashing on the shore with these natural stones mixed in with concrete and a can. So these are some of the, the larger, more extreme examples of what I could find. If you look closer, you'll also find uh, more bottles, but also much, much smaller items, uh, easier to see or easier to overlook uh, pieces of litter. What you see in the first picture here on the left, this is the moment you get from the parking lot to this sea level area where I was standing. That was the first thing I saw when I arrived there. It's a small piece of plastic. The, the picture on the right, uh, you see three very different kinds of litter. The one uh, at the top left is a, a piece of plastic. In the middle looks like a ribbon of some kind. It's some sort of coil shape, um, but not metal. Um, and the very small glinting thing on the right is glass. And that's actually where I'd like to focus our attention. Um, the the floor, for lack of a better word, the ground that you walk on um, when you get down to this lower part of the park is a mixture of stone, soil, shells, and these glass shards, uh, which they all mix very well together, but that doesn't make them safe for humans or for animals. Now, this isn't unique to Joliet Park. You also see some at Voyager Park down in uh, De Pere on the Fox, the Fox River. Now Voyager Park is much larger and much more human centric. It's much more grassy. There's a playground, there's this pier. So there's already a lot more human traffic. There's also a lot of fishing that happens in both Joliet Park and Voyager Park. Um, Voyager Park, because it's so much more human oriented, I believe more active cleanup happens here, but there is still a lot of risk of uh, litter. They're not pictured here, um, but you, you'll regularly find cigarette butts um, and you'll even find trash cans right next to the water where it's very easy for refuse to make its way into the waterway and pollute the waterway further. Now we all know that litter can be incredibly dangerous, but it's worth taking a moment to break down exactly how dangerous uh, this refuse, this debris can be, both for humans and for uh, other than human life in these natural areas. So if we start on the right, according to the EPA, all of these things that you see are possible dangers for seabirds in particular, but also for fish, for other coastal wildlife. Um, if they were to ingest just plastic, these things are specific to plastic injection, but uh, ingestion, I apologize, uh, but consider how much worse such things as internal and external wounds could be if a bird were to attempt to swallow a piece of glass um, or a, a part of a uh, fishing equipment that was left behind um, or a piece of a, a metal can, how much more dangerous these things would be. So you can see wounds, it can have a huge effect on their internal systems, their ability to move, um, their ability to reproduce. And eventually 
obviously all of these things can easily lead to death in wildlife. Now it's also worth considering the human cost of litter. Um, the first thing that I think of is actually one of the trips that I took to Joliet Park. I saw a young person take off their shoes and wade into the water, which should absolutely be something someone can do at this park. However, considering that mixed in with shells and stones are pieces of glass, it's very, very dangerous to remove your shoes, uh, but it absolutely shouldn't be. In addition, of course, it can be a risk to recreational fishing if any of this debris were to make it into the fish or into the, the fish's habitats. Um, that can be incredibly detrimental. In fact, there are signs posted at every park along the Fox River and Green Bay uh, with specific instructions as to how much of what kind of fish a human can eat. And that's of course a result in part of the PCBs that were being dropped uh, in, the, in the Fox River and made its way into Green Bay back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, which no longer happens. And they actually very fortunately just finished the first phase of cleanup. It took them about 17 years. So most of that hopefully um, is not as awful, but it is worth recognizing that we have concerns over fish safety already the existence of so much litter and especially these tiny pieces that are so easy for wildlife to ingest, that can be very dangerous for the fish. It can also be very dangerous for humans who are fishing in these waters and then trying to consume that fish. Um, there's also a reduced economic value to the area of the park. It's less attractive to tourists. It's less attractive to uh, people who might want to live in the area. And so the, the value of the homes in the area is reduced, not to mention the excessive amount of money that it can cost to clean up the amount of litter that I found, particularly at Joliet Park that was so, so prevalent. Now, this is according to the US Department of the Interior. This is a very specific quote. You can see just how dangerous litter and debris in particular can be in marine and coastal environments like the parks that we're talking about. Uh, as they say, marine debris can injure or kill marine or coastal wildlife. It can damage and degrade habitats, interfere with navigational safety. That applies to human navigation. Um, cause economic loss to fishing and maritime industries, degrade the quality of life in coastal communities, and threaten human health and safety in addition to animal health and safety. And of course, uh, the, the safety of the plants and uh, the other non-animal life uh, in, in these coastal areas in these parks. Now, as you can see, and I'll play this video for a moment, between this very, very detailed artistic demonstration and this video, you can see the insects are of course alive and well at Joliet Park. I'll allow this video to play for a moment so you can see gnats there. As we pan down, it's a little difficult to see because the camera doesn't pick it up terribly well, but you'll see hopefully a rather large spider web in here. And then as we continue to pan over, The spider web continues. And we have another one up here. So clearly insects have zero concerns uh, as far as litter, but it's worth noting that unlike Voyager Park, birds are not terribly common in Joliet Park. And I think that is in part due to the layout overall, but when you consider that plenty of birds in this area eat insects, it is interesting just how few birds are present. And I do think that speaks to the way in which we have failed to keep this park clean and safe. Um, in addition to the other images that you've seen, I've seen uh, plastic bags waving in the wind. I've seen pieces of paper flying around. I've seen candy wrappers. I think the presence of these things pose enough of a danger that birds don't seem to don't seem to spend much time at this park, and that is a concern. Now, both of these parks are special to many of us. I myself have particularly enjoyed the solitude and the peace that I've been able to find at both of them. Voyager is an incredibly friendly and welcoming place, but also so large that it's very easy to feel like you have time to yourself and just focus on the sounds of the water um, and the, the life around you. Joliet in particular is a, a really nice escape from the city. It's really a beautiful place to just be for a while. Um, it is a wonderful place to 
step into the water to fish, but also just to be, um, not to mention it's also a very impressive natural amphitheater because of the steep incline between the parking lot and sea level. Um, so it's really, really easy to hear the water and just find peace and take a break from the rest of the environment. So these are parks that we want to protect. Um, and I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences. So what do we do? Well, there's kind of two sides to the answer to that question. The first is on individual uh, responsibility. Things like bottles, wrappers, fishing equipment don't just magically end up in a park. Um, things like trash from a picnic, cigarette butts don't just somehow mysteriously find their way into the waterways. Those are choices um, that humans make either on purpose or by accident. It's a lack of, it can be uh, deliberate and it can simply be a lack of consciousness of your awareness. So of course, the first thing we need to do is be mindful of whatever you brought with you to this, this space. Remember that this is a shared space and that it is shared not only with all of the other humans in your community, but with all of this other life uh, that deserves to be as clean and safe and protected as the human life. And so anything you bring, make sure to bring back with you. Joliet Park and Voyager Park both actually have trash cans pretty easily accessible. So it should be very easy to at least make it back to the parking lot before you feel the need to throw something away. Um, the other side, of course, is the active cleanup of these parks. Now Voyager, as I said, uh, I think because of the nature of the park, because of how the park is frequently used, already does some of this. But I think it is in our interest to invest in an active cleanup effort specifically for those little things that are harder to see and harder to notice and harder to hold on to ourselves. There's a reason for those glass shards and it's very possible that the reason is something fell and broke and we weren't able to pick everything up. But it will take time and it will take money uh, for the right people, environmentalists, people are, who are familiar with these parks, uh, possibly parks department employees to go into this space and actually remove all of these dangerous items so that these parks can be kept safe. Thank you very much for your time. I referred today to the EPA and the Department of the Interior in my discussion of uh, the dangers of litter and marine debris. So here is where you can look for more information. Have a wonderful afternoon.